Can you just go into a little bit of detail about the study, real world evidence of the effect on glycemic control with relatively simultaneous versus sequential initiation of basal incident, insulin and GLP-1 receptor agonists? Yes, absolutely. Uh, really, what this trial was designed to investigate is in a real world setting, you know, what's happening out there in clinical practice for the patient population who has a high A1C, those people with A1Cs greater than 9%, poor glycemic control, does the combination of, in, uh, of a GLP-1 and a basal insulin initiated simultaneously have a better chance of achieving glycemic outcomes and getting people to goal as opposed to the sequential addition of those injectables? Uh, meaning starting either the GLP-1 or the basal insulin first and then adding that second agent. So what were some of the key findings of this study? The key finding of the study was the fact that it was that the hypothesis was proven to be correct. Uh, for, that, for that group of individuals uh, who have high A1Cs, once they start uh, injectable therapy, the initiation simultaneously, and in this study, the definition of simultaneously was in a one month period of time. So the, the individuals had to initiate a GLP-1 and a basal insulin within a 30 day period of time. And they were compared to individuals who had both of those agents initiated, but in a longer time frame, a sequential time frame. So instead of within 30 days, within some time within the next year. So uh, what it shows is that individuals who initiated those two agents, a GLP-1 and a basal insulin, simultaneously within that one month did very well. Uh, they had a better chance of achieving A1C goals, a better chance of achieving significant A1C losses of greater than 1% or greater than 2%. So obviously, based on the hypothesis, this wasn't extremely surprising, these results. Yeah, there's a high unmet need in these people. And you know, generally, our treatment guidelines suggest initiation of a single therapy, uh, wait till A1C is high enough to, to justify the initi initiation of a second therapy. But for these people who have poor control, you know, we know from previous work in the real world experience that they have a hard time, they have a low risk, they have a low chance of getting to their glycemic goals with the initiation of a single agent. So it made logical sense to think, well, you know, these are two agents, a GLP-1 and a basal insulin, that have very complementary mechanisms of action. They're both, they're, they're both potent agents at lowering glycemia. So initiating them simultaneously in this high-risk group made sense, and, and that's exactly what was proven to be the case.